the discipline you have when you have a startup is you have to be solving some significant problems and it has to be in a significantly big marketplace. Hello, and welcome to episode 12 of the Reagent Podcast. This podcast is all about careers in the life sciences. It could be about um, drilling down into an architect or a molecular biologist or someone in the, in the peripheral business arena. Um, and we really wanna shine a light on the day-to-day habits Um, the workflows people use, and everything about developing your career in and around the life sciences. We're brought to you by One Point Solutions. We are the leader in lab design and construction and have custom furniture for all sorts of industrial, commercial, laboratory needs. In this week's episode, I'm talking with Tyler Ellison. He is the CEO of ChemDirect, a solvent and reagent Um, direct to end user distribution company. Traditionally, this industry has a lot of middlemen, a lot of big companies um, that kind of have an oligopoly on the chemical market. So if you wanted to buy certain solvents for use in your lab, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with that process, um, you don't really have too many options and you don't have too many options to, you know, lower your costs, lower your pricing. Um, so ChemDirect is an interesting company that kind of, kind of is like Amazon for these highly regulated, um, really heavy duty substances, not the kind of stuff you could just pick up from your local pharmacy. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Tyler. So Mm -hmm. so you originally wanted to be a civil litigator, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and how did you, I'm curious, like what led to the transition between that to working at Schneider in logistics? Can you kind of paint that picture for me? Yeah. So, you know, like so many things, it's, there's always an accidental component. So I actually thought, you know, the transition out of law practice to private or to industry, the best route would have been a private company. And so I looked at a bunch of different private companies. My wife is a native of Green Bay um, and Schneider was a great you know, great fit. And so I ended up in logistics and uh, there's something um, awesome about it. So it was, it was a great, uh, great company. Um, and that, that was the transition. Got it. And you, were you a general counsel there? Is that what? No, the best advice I ever was? got, best advice ever was don't go into the GC's office, go learn the business from the, the ground up. So I actually went from, you know, a co- in the cozy confines of a corner office in a big, you know, downtown law firm to having a Time Warner headphones on, sitting outside of Diesel Fuel Island, managing like 70 drivers. And I wow. absolutely, absolutely loved it. And all of them spoke French as their primary language. They're all from Quebec. Really? That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> so what, so you had a pretty, pretty quick like ascent into leadership there. It sounds like you, looks like you hit your groove and that was like your first real position of like executive leadership. Um, what would you yeah. attribute that to, um, that rise? You know, I think um, I think law does a tremendous job of of rewarding critical thinking and listening, and I think those are two under you know really underappreciated leadership traits are the ability to think and the ability to to listen to people, and so I think that more than anything, um, legal training helped a ton. Interesting, cool. Well, now that we have that um, that little you know background, set the stage for. Um, your current endeavors, um, what has it been like for you transitioning into the life sciences? Uh, Challenging, but rewarding at the same time. So sold the company in 2014, and I've been a a board of director at Nova Molecular, which is a specialty chemicals manufacturer for almost 15 years now, maybe 16. Mm. So the founder asked if I would consider um, uh, taking over the helm of it. And, you know, again, uh, certainly not a domain expert in life sciences and but thought the challenge would be interesting. And it was a fascinating industry. And now I'm now I'm in it. So, gotcha. again, how sort did, of an ac- accidental nature to that, too. Yeah. How did you how did you make that connection originally? Uh, I was an undergrad and made that connection on a fishing boat in Canada. Hell, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yep. about living life. You know, that's what brings the best rewards. Um, yep. Got it. Okay, cool. So I do want to talk a little bit about ChemDirect um, and and kind of dig in because I think it's very interesting where you guys are at. Um, and, and we can relate to it, you know, on our end at one point a lot of being kind of a disruptive player 
Um, but I think you, you guys almost have another scale to that, you know, having some interesting funding and all that. Um, so can you talk a little bit about what it's like trying to disrupt an industry that, you know, might not be used to disruption as much, uh, might not be that friendly to that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, what has that experience been like for you guys trying to like buck the trend there? Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually, um, it's actually been great. And so, you know, I think, if you think about how we act and start as consumers and our personal behavior, um, there's, there's not going to be that, that big separation of how we act at work. And so I think you start with that premise of, you know, people are buying, especially post pandemic, people are buying and shopping and want to look online for their products. Right. And so, and they want it fast. They want, they want the ability to have choice and they want transparency. So it really starts with that kind of basic premise. And so convincing people, you know, and, and our industry in the, in the chemical industry is really a dumbbell shaped demographic, right? We have a lot of, you know, engineers over, you know, 50, 55, and then we have a lot of new entrants coming in, you know, under 30. That under 30 crowd has a different set of standards and principles at, at which they're going to work. And so we're really catering it to, um, you know, the whole industry, but particularly people that are going to be, you know, very savvy um, and, and very digital natives, if you will, that are going to yeah. they're going to buy that way. For sure. Um, did you guys have a specific ideation process when you were coming up with you know this business model and tr- really calculating like what audiences you were going to be going after? Yeah. So <clears throat> absolutely. So to me, the 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 discipline you have when you have a startup is you have to be solving some significant problems, and it has to be in a significantly big marketplace. Yeah. So there's a lot of startups have are solving great problems, but the addressable market's not that interesting. And there's some that are solving kind of insignificant problems, but the market's huge. So to me, the litmus test is sort of both. And so the problem, the two problems we were solving, one is manufacturers do not have access to the end market, right? And they have to go through traditional distribution channels. Therefore, they, they can't create a customer strategy that's well-informed. They abdicate their customer data. And so as a manufacturer, that was driving me crazy because we're flying blind. We have no idea who's using it, why they're using it. So that was the manufacturing problem I was solving. And then you have, if you do research, you have the long tail occasional buyer who can't, simply can't access the products when they need it at the price point that they need it at. So I'm solved, that's the big problem on the consumer end. So it really started, the ideation started from those buckets. Yeah. And then we, we went into the life science and that lab based industry because that was our that was our comfort zone and we knew the unit economics. We will be right back after a word from our sponsor. One Point Solutions provides a free quote and design services for your laboratory furniture needs. We specialize in custom manufacturing and have the shortest turnaround times in the industry. Connect with us at onepointsolutions.com forward slash contact and speak with our design experts today. Sure. Interesting. So just to shine a little light on the details, like what specific umbrella of chemicals do you guys sell? Yeah, well, we have about 200,000 SKUs currently. Gotcha. And they were focused on, you know, reagents, labs, testing, all of, all of those. Now, post-COVID, we have, we've expanded pretty aggressively into more industrial chemicals. Because again, the advantage, if you think fundamentally what we bring to bear, price advantage, speed advantage, quality advantage, so our lead time for all of these COVID disinfectants is like three days. Yeah, and, wow. and most traditional distribution channels are like 20 weeks if they're, if they're in stock. Mm-hmm. So having that digital connection allows just absolute speed to market, absolute price advantage and a quality advantage. Interesting. Cool. Um, so how have you guys kind of adapted to COVID in the office? Are you, have you, you know, have you guys tr- transitioned to a lot of remote work or have you, Aside from that, like major product shift, like what are you seeing on your end? Yeah, so we we are actually starting in mid March. We actually came into the office. Interesting. And so, I think at the maturation level of a startup, it's hard to be remote work because you you need to be kind of next to each other and finishing each other's sentences and listening to the conversations and just that fluidity that you need. so I don't, I don't, I don't think we're a mature enough company at that stage to, to effectively, as effectively work remotely. So we came, we're social distancing at work. We wear masks in common areas, but we have a great, huge office space. So it's, we're not, we're not on top of one another. That's awesome. It's not like you guys are lacking any uh, hand sanitizer over there. No. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, 
so one area I think would be interesting that uh, is to touch on is um, kind of like newer emerging markets. Like one thing when I spoke to Rich a couple weeks ago, um, like the, the kind of starter of our conversation was about cannabis. Mm-hmm. And um, do you have any insights on that market? Um, and like what are you seeing around the cannabis industry and the way that's like evolving? Yeah, I, I think it's in the, the very, uh, you know, almost the top of the first inning, right? So yeah. right now it's sort of the, 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 the regulatory lag. So the regulations and the regulatory you know, units haven't caught up with the industry. And that's sort of frustrating the new entrants, right? So there's, they're having to overcome either regulations that shouldn't apply, that, that they can't get rid of fast enough. So it's just an, a, a newly emerging industry. What makes it attractive to a ChemDirect is... Um, this tends to be a demographic that are digital natives and they do not have old habits to break. So they quickly, yeah, yeah, they don't have to undo anything and that what they come right to chem direct and that's that. For sure. Yeah. They can't really rely on the way things have always been done anyway. So they, you know, they're used to yeah. looking for new avenues. Exactly right. Interesting. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing all that. I mean, we kind of touched on the, the pieces I want to hit on. Um, yeah. It, are, are there any other kind of areas you, th- you think might be interesting to touch on? Um, I would just say, you know, the, the you know, PPE is, is big. I mean, you know, we have a social obligation to fight this pandemic for, for yeah. all of us. And we do have the best EPA certification chemicals that we can get very quickly to market. Yeah. So that's, that's been an advantage that we have um, just, you know, and, and it's attracting people of widely varying ethics. And we've got, we've got great, you know, highly, highly reputed manufacturers that um, we're, we're connecting the marketplace with. So. Excellent. Uh, so two quick wrap up, wrap up questions for you. What yeah. is a book, a book that you've read recently that's either brought you value or brought you joy? I would say what's the, a book called the coddling of the American mind. I thought was a fascinating, fascinating book, particularly with the, the ages of our kids. And really the premise of it was um, you know, education to me, and you know, you had a good, good education was really teaching one how to think and not what to think sure. and, and how we've seemed to have lost our way as a country with our system more focused on what to think. And it also talked about like even having civil discourse, which like even in law was, was, was part of the expectation of you don't get offended if somebody has a completely different opinion. I think we've lost that, lost that. Yeah. And, you know, even with my kids, the, the, they're all college age, the amount of material that they consider out of bounds that you can't even talk about is alarming to me. You know, yeah. it's just like it's just absolutely alarming that you can't have civil discourse. So the book, the book was just a fascinating read. And the kind of the, the fact that, um, you know, dealing with anxiety like this, that we have a generation that tries to avoid everything that causes anxiety and just how what a horrible life strategy that really is. Mm-hmm. Right. That yeah. you really need to kind of confront that and to break through and get on the other side. And anxiety is just a normal, a normal thing. You know, I mean, it, it, everybody's nervous taking a big test. Everybody's nervous public speaking. It's just like that coping mechanism to be able to figure out how to live with it. So that's really what the book addressed. I thought it was great. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it sure is challenging right now. I mean, especially to be a parent of a teen right now or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, it's probably has never been a more challenging time to do that. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Um, and then the, Second question I want to ask is what is it like a tool or a product you've gotten in the last, you know, month or so that's brought you value? Um, could be a Peloton bike, could be an app you guys use at work. Um, I would say yeah. two, two, two things. One is an app called uh, Smartsheet. Okay. And it's, it's a digital way to sort of manage your entire business. And so gotcha. if you have like a, if you have a continuous improvement plan or a, a technology roadmap, any of those things, you get alerts. Like if anybody changes it, it get, you get an alert on your phone. So you can like r- literally manage an entire company digitally through this app. Um, Excellent. That would be one. And the other one is a little Amsterdam startup called Snitcher. And it's, they give you a lot of really good information and intelligence of, you know, who's looking for your products and why. Really? Okay. Well, mm-hmm. I, I definitely have to check that out for sure. Yep. Yep. Anyway, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me. It was great. Time. Yeah. Awesome. Take care. Have a good weekend. <laughs>